And joining us live on the phone to discuss this issue in depth is uh, activist Dan Poulton. Dan, thank you very much for joining the uh, bulletin who joins us actually live on Skype. Um, is it all bad news uh, to the UK housing market, as the report from The Guardian suggests? Well, I think it's um, very ironic that at a time when the uh, British media are going into hysteria over the supposed threat of immigration, this story has passed them by, whereby we have a situation uh, wherein, for example, uh, a Malaysian billionaire can build houses uh, in London, which is hit by this housing shortage, by spiralling house prices, uh, building apartments that cost £5 million each. This is in a city where the average house price is 400000 way, way above what most uh, ordinary people can can um, can afford. Um, for the first time since the 1950s, uh, the amount of homeowners is dropping. Over half of people who pay rents can't afford to buy houses. This is obviously uh, looks very bad. There are some glimmers of hope. Um, if you look at the success that, for example, the E15 Mothers, this is a group who are of, of young mothers who are facing eviction in East London, fought a campaign to stop their eviction, which was to evict them so that they could raise the rents and sell their uh, they're building off to a, to a corporation. That was actually stopped because of people power, because people got out in the streets and started to campaign and say that, that there's a massive crisis and it can't be tackled by forcing out ordinary uh, ordinary people. So I think there is um, glimmers of hope in the situation, but the general situation is, is, a, is a terrible situation that is the product of decades of deregulation, a massive housing crisis, lack of uh, council house building and all these uh, sorts of things. Mm. Now, how significant uh, is foreign property investment on the UK economy? Well, it's 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 big. I mean, as your report said in London, it's, it's this is the real sort of hotspot, and the reason for this is because London is uh, billed as an international hub of finance. Lots of foreign investments go through London. That's how the city makes its money. But as we've seen with the financial crisis and all these sorts of things, and the ongoing recession and the threats of new recession, that ordinary people haven't benefited from this. But yet at the same time, these are international investors are making their millions, often short, put in offshore tax avoiding havens and these sorts of things think, so that people don't see it. I'm sorry, do you, do you think maybe because they're, they're making so much millions that uh, the, the, the government has done anything to tackle the issue because maybe it's having a positive impact on the economy? Well, this is the, this is the classic argument about trickle down, but we, we just haven't seen that. What we have seen is because houses effectively have been used as a safe investment for people's money rather than somewhere to live, that's pushed up the average prices, as I said, £400,000, the average house price in London. That's absolutely uh, huge. Some of these um, uh, investors that your report is talking about, this Guardian report, are uh, their house, they're selling apartments, three-bed apartments worth double that. So it's actually making these, these products, these goods, more inaccessible. Uh, to people, and yet the people who buy, own these properties don't live in them, so they don't benefit to the local economy. It's not like the Abu Dhabi businessman is going around these communities buying his food in local shops and stimulating the economy and all these things. These are effectively almost permanent hotel suites that they can use if they want, but most of the time are, are empty, and a lot of the money is in, in tax havens. So actually, this, these millions aren't actually necessarily trickling down. Yeah, now interestingly, um, I mean, Islington Council were prepared mm -hmm. to fine investors who mm -hmm. leave homes empty, um, Dan, just to yes. make money. So is this, a, is this a viable solution from Islington Council? Absolutely. We've got to see crackdowns on these sorts of, uh, on sorts of, these sorts of things because it's completely unacceptable. That at the same time that in North London, the police are going around confiscating the homeless people's uh, sleeping bags and food and so on. At the same time, they're evicting homeless people over the Christmas period. Um, it's seen as that's seen as beyond the pale, and yet it's seen as completely acceptable that um, we have this sort of wild west system where there was no control whatsoever on on renting, on prices, and these sorts of things. We've got to start cracking down on these things, building council houses, and start actually looking to serve the needs of ordinary people and not the millionaires. Okay, then we're just going to have to leave it there. Activist uh, Dan Poulton, thank you very much for your time.